So there's a ton of different ways that you can frame out the inside of your van. The way I did it last time and the way I'm gonna do it again this time is I got a full sheet of four foot by eight foot uh, half inch plywood. I had them rip it in half to make it easier to transport while I was at Home Depot. And I'm gonna use my table saw here and rip a ton of strips at two and a half inches wide. Those will act as almost, almost like studs in a house but I'll be using them to attach to the actual structure of the van itself. And that's what's gonna give the surface to attach walls and other things too. So let's just jump right into it. Let's start cutting some wood. Okay, that got a little dusty, but we're all done. We got all of our strips cut for our studs. Now let's go in the van and see where we're gonna put them all. So, on my last van, I only attached studs to the structure of the van. And that wasn't quite enough. The walls are a little, were a little flimsy. I ended up fixing it, but there's a little give to the walls itself. And I only used quarter inch cedar wall panels. So it just wasn't the strongest. This one's gonna be much better. In between each of these studs, when I frame out, I'll use that Craig jig to attach from the bottom to the top so that there's multiple studs throughout the entire van. For right here, instead of doing a half inch sheet, because this is, I believe it's three quarter, maybe it's an inch. Either I'm gonna find that dimension and get maybe a two by four actually, probably just get a full two by four so that it actually gives out further than this. That way I can have it attached on all of this up here. And that will be my uh, mounting point. So I'm gonna start working on the ceiling, framing out the ceiling panels first. And uh, this is kind of just a general woodworking tip but if you have a lot of repeated cuts to make it's good practice to set up a stop block so I know that five or sorry six of the pieces on the ceiling are going to be 55 inches so if you set up a stop block so that the blade is going to cut right at 55 you can do repeated cuts and you don't have to measure cut measure cut you just measure it one time set up the stop block and then you can just go ahead and make six cuts without uh, measuring anything out. It really just helps speed up the process and makes it way more efficient. A lot of times if you're gonna measure then cut, measure then cut, you're gonna mess up somewhere at some point. So this kind of helps prevent that. So all the tools I'm gonna be using to install this, I have these self-tapping screws. I got them an inch and 7 16. I'm going to be using a drill with an eighth inch, eighth inch drill bit, my impact driver with the Phillips head, and then this construction adhesive I'm going to put on the back of all the studs to make sure that they don't ever come loose or so that they're attached even stronger than just the screws. So in case you guys are wondering why I went with a half inch instead of like a three quarter inch plywood, it's because half inch is thin enough that it's able to bend and take the shape of the van itself. And it also saves you enough headroom so that you're still able to stand straight up in these vans. Putting in the framework goes in pretty smoothly up until I guarantee most people have trouble putting this one in, which is right above the headliner. And the reason is because your drill can't fit underneath to get a good good bite on that on the metal. So you gotta think outside the box a little bit. I have my impact driver, and instead of having the long bit that goes out the front of it, I put just the tiny Phillips head bit inside of there. That way I can get up underneath it 
and start screwing these in. <laughs> it's a little unorthodox, but so is building in a van. So you gotta be able to get a little creative and that's how it's done. So another tricky part about framing out the ceiling is this back portion, because there's no stud or I guess framework uh, all the way in the back. So what I do is I have a piece um, pine board that I'm gonna use for when I install the ceiling. So I use it kind of like a straight edge and I put it up and where it comes to on this back wall, I get my pencil and I scribe a line so you can see the line that comes across. So what I'll do is I'll get a piece of wood and I'll cut it and attach it to this part of the van right here. That way when I put the boards in, I'll put some glue on top of that board I just installed and I'll be able to squeeze it down and that wood glue is what's gonna hold it to that board. So here's what that piece looks like once it's in and installed. I just did some construction adhesive behind it. You can see some of it kind of bled through and then attached it with those same self tappers. So now the ceiling panel is gonna come over and across and sit on top of this. Remember how earlier I said I was gonna use some two by sixes to frame out this part? Check this out. So where that comes up to on the ceiling is perfect. So that'll be able to seam seamlessly transition from the ceiling to the shiplap walls that we're gonna have going down. So I think that's where I'm gonna call it for today. And I'll tackle the other side tomorrow and continue framing out uh, the walls. Okay, good morning, we're back at it. Today we're gonna be framing out the wall panels. And before we do that, we have to get rid of these T40 factory bolts that come with it. So I just have this guy right here. I got the snowboarding gloves on again because it's a nice crisp, cold morning here. But we'll take these things off and we'll start cutting wood and getting after it. So also in the mail yesterday, I got the driver's side swivel seat. So I'm gonna be throwing that in today. But like I said in the last video, look at this packaging. You got a giant hole right here in the middle. This side's all dented, it didn't even have tape on it. It's all beat up. I don't know what's going on with their packaging department, but they need some improvement. One way to check to see if it's all flush, you get a nice straight edge, put it against it, and notice that all points are touching. So we have a nice flush framework to install some cabinets. So for framing out the bed frame, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the, those brackets that hold two by fours uh, vertically. So then those will span all the way across the, the bed frame. In my last fan, I put them on top of this two by four and run across and that made the bed just too tall. So this one, I'm gonna have it lower. That way it's easier to get into and out of bed, but you also don't lose that much garage space. So I have this two by six here. I have it clamped now. I'm gonna drill right into the frame and then use these three inch screws. Let's get to it. So one thing about building a van is that's really hard is making sure everything is square and plumb and flush because there's really no straight edges or anything in the van. So now that I have this one attached, to make sure that this one is the same height, just find the same point on the ground. So I'll use these um, bolts that are in the floor and I'll measure up to the bottom of the two by four. And if they line up, then that's as square as you're gonna get it. So that's what we're gonna do. Now, before I start working on the wall panels, I'm gonna attach those two by sixes up to those points up there, and then I'll be able to work on the vertical pieces. One little tip I'd like to share with you, just so you know you're actually gonna hit some metal when you're drilling through your two by six, but just so I don't miss it on all of them, I marked on the, on the wall behind it where those studs are gonna be. 
just to make your life a little bit easier. test I told you guys about to make sure everything was all flushed up and I showed it to you guys up here well I just tried it out again so I used half inch plywood for these supports when I try to do my my test here I hit this support beam so what I should have done was use three quarter inch for these but because I have it all liquid nails I ripped some quarter inch plywood and I plan on nail gun and uh, wood gluing it to this and then that gives me enough clearance to make it all the way across. Learn from my mistakes. Okay so you can see that they completely lined up that it's completely flush with this support beam here so from here on out on these ones over here and I guess that's it just this one right here I'm going to be using three quarter inch plywood and not half inch. Okay, so check it out. I'm actually pretty happy with how this went. I thought it was not going to be that strong because you can see it doesn't flush up exactly, but the way these Craig screws work, it went right into this the corner of this 2x6 and it had all of this um, wood to go into. So it's actually way stronger than I thought. It's actually shaking the whole van with it. Tomorrow I'll finish up on this side and I'm especially going to make this side strong because it's going to be holding all of our overhead cabinets. Anyways, that is where I'm going to leave it today and I'll see you guys in the morning. YouTube, good morning. We're back at it. Uh, today we should be finishing up the framing here and maybe just a couple hours. Uh, let's just jump right into it. decided to triple up because or quadruple up that is because I'm gonna be tiling here so I want this as sturdy as possible so that nothing no tiles will shake loose or grout lines will break or anything like that so I think that is good to go now I'm just gonna to try to figure out the best way to have the most possible space for the bed over here okay so change of plans here uh, I'm going to start, I started taking these out already, these vertical pieces, because I think it's a huge waste of space when it comes to the sleeping area. The whole point of the ProMasters is, is to sleep side to side. So I think the best way to go about it is I'm going to attach the shiplap walls directly to the metal frame itself, just out to where this uh, 2x6 is. The only problem is when you get back here, there's nothing really to attach something to and I don't want these boards just being loose so I'll have to figure something out here with it whether I stick it to the wall or if I attach it to the support there but other than that that should work this just goes to show how good wood glue works because I've already taken the screws out <laughs> there we go man wood glue strong stuff things are finally starting to come together with this. So what I did here, this is gonna be the vertical piece. I'm gonna put the Craig screws in the top of this. And then I attached with wood glue and nails, 
uh, another piece that's gonna fit in just like this. And then now when I attach the shiplap to these metal supports, the shiplap's gonna butt right up against it. I don't know if you can see that. So that's gonna give me the most amount of room from side to side to be able to fit that 74 inch mattress. So off to good things. And there it is. Let's get a better look at this. So I got a bunch of wood glue and some nails. So this is really sturdy. So I'll be able to put the shiplap right on these metal pieces right here. Then we come to this side. It's also squared off so that the uh, shiplap can butt right up against it. I did that on both sides. And I, when you measure from this support beam to the one on the other side of it, it's 76 inches. So when you add that with a half inch shiplap, you got 75. So our mattress will fit in there just right. Got all the overhead stuff done, the ceiling's done. And now I guess I can start insulating, running wires, all the fun stuff. And as always, thank you for watching. Before you go, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and the notification bell next to the subscribe button. And uh, leave me a comment, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.